Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio. Today we have the story of Thunder Mesa Mining Company Locomotive Number 7, an 042 Porter tank engine named in honor of the great Disney animator Frank Thomas. Frank Thomas was one of the legendary nine old men at Disney, and he, along with his good friend Ollie Johnston, literally wrote the book on Disney character animation. Frank was also a member of the lively Dixieland jazz group, the Firehouse Five Plus Two, an ensemble of animators slash musicians who played at Disneyland often in the early years. Since Five Plus Two equals seven, that seemed like an appropriate number for a locomotive named in his honor. So ride along with me now as I convert a stock Bachman model into Thunder Mason number seven, the Frank Thomas. Well, over here on the workbench, I have one of these classic ubiquitous Bachman 042 porters. And for this project, I'm going to attempt to um, make it look a lot more like a locomotive from the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad attractions at Disney Parks, especially the one at Disneyland and the one at uh, Walt Disney World. Same color scheme and all that. I like starting with these uh, maroon colored porters with the gold pinstriping because that gives me a bit of a head start. I don't have to repaint, um, repaint the tank or anything. The first thing we need to do is remove the existing cab because we're going to replace that uh, with something new. And if you look closely there, you'll see there's four tiny little screws. So the first thing we got to do is take those screws out and take off the, uh, the stock Bachman cab. Now I'm really not going to uh, do any more disassembly than that in order to add the decals. I mean, I could, but you don't really need to. Uh, I'm going to use the factory paint here, so I'm not repainting this. It's got a nice glossy, glossy finish to it, so it's good for decals. I've got a sheet of uh, decals that I had made, custom made, uh, quite some time ago by Stan Cedarleaf. Uh, cedar leaf custom decals, and I'll put a link uh, down below so you can check that out. And these are classic water slide decals with the uh, the clear uh, the clear decal film. And I've already cut a couple of these out, and I'm going to just trim these a little bit more because the more decal film you have, the more likely it is it's going to show up on the final model, and you'll get that cloudy, filmy look. Now I don't know about you, but I've always found applying decals to be, well, a little stressful. And <laughs> to minimize that stress, uh, I like to have everything ready to go before I begin. And um, here's what I'll be using. First, we have a dish, a shallow dish uh, with uh, hot water or warm water, a paper towel ready to go, the uh, hobby knife, a small soft brush. This is a, a sable brush, very soft. And then we have our uh, Microset and Microsol. These are from Micromark uh, for uh, applying the decals. First thing I like to do is put some of the Microset on the work where the decal is going to be positioned. It likes to bead up and evaporate quickly, so I don't want to take too long. And then we're going to drop this in the water here for about 10 seconds. That should be enough. And we're going to blot the extra water off. I'm going to kind of use the heel of the brush to get it started. And don't worry if it's not in the exactly the right place the first time. A little more microset. Soften that up and move it around into just where I want it, which is centered right on the tank. Now we want to take and get the extra liquid off of the brush and go back and use the tip of it to pick up the extra microset. I've got that positioned where I want it. It's nice and straight. At least it looks pretty straight to my eye here. So I'm going to leave it alone for just a minute. All right, that has dried for a couple of minutes, so it's no longer moving around. And the next step is to try and make this decal film disappear. 
And for that, we're going to use the micro salt. And the way I understand it, this is basically just a stronger version, a less diluted version of this. So you want to use it sparingly. And what this will do is help to basically dissolve this decal film. And what I like to do is you don't put a lot on, just a little bit on the end of your brush. And I go around the edges of the decal, kind of soften it and blend it in. Because if you get too much on here, it's going to soften that decal uh, too much and uh, then it might rip, it might reposition, it might wrinkle. You might have all kinds of problems. So, all right, I'm going to leave that alone for a little bit. Well, that's looking about as good as I can get it. Um, so now I'm going to turn it over and do the other side. Same way. Well, I've got the, uh, the decals done on both sides of the tank. Pretty happy with the way those came out. And now I need to add a number seven decal here to the back of the fuel bunker. And let me show you how I do that. I've removed the uh, front coupler here so I won't damage it. And I'm just going to take this tape roll and the foam padding and just prop the locomotive up like that. Once again, the micro set where the decal is going to go. This in here for about 10 seconds. Slide it off the backing. Get that out of here. All right. Now we can position it and uh, use the microsol and the microset just like before. Well, now while I let this dry, um, I can show you what I have planned for the cab. I am going to build a, uh, a whole new cab for it, and I've created a, a laser cut cab that uh, emulates the look of the Big Thunder Mountain uh, locomotive cabs. I call mine Little Thunder. And if you're wondering if these will be commercially available, probably. So keep, a, keep an eye out for these. <laughs> these will be coming probably soon from Crescent Creek Models. I went ahead and uh, put a cut of primer on this, just a gray primer. Uh, with something as thin as this, 1 32nd of an inch thick, uh, you can easily get away with priming it right on the card without removing the pieces. The, uh, the walls of the cab are basically a sandwich of two pieces. You have an inner and an outer uh, laser cut piece and it just lays right on top like that. And to get a nice, clean, crisp paint job, you want to paint these two separately if you want contrasting colors, which I do. So, the first thing I'm going to do is remove all of the wall pieces for the interior and uh, we'll go ahead and paint those. Rattle can. This is satin moss green. I wanted a satin finish on this. Gives the look of uh, old varnish. And while that lighter green is drying, go ahead and prep all of the uh, darker green pieces as well. And we can go paint those. There we go. Now we'll get the dark green on there. All right. We've got all the pieces painted, and I think it's safe to start on a little assembly. Okay, so this gets on here flush with the inside edge. Now we can do the other side. To build the front wall, I actually want to cement this trim piece in place first. So this is notched right there, and it just fits right in that groove, just like that. All right. With that corner done, I can now apply glue 
to the back of this piece and we can cement the interior wall in. And it goes flush up against that corner. Just like that. Really important to make sure this uh, this little U-shaped area here where it fits over the boiler, all the pieces are nice and flush. The nice thing about multi-layered walls like this, well, for one thing, it gives you uh, the opportunity to do some fancy paint, but it also gives you more glue surface in the corners where you need it for strength. Okay, the next thing I want to do is add these roof cross pieces, these arches, and these tabs fit right down into these slots on the roof, just like that. I'm checking the square with my cutting board here, lining it up to the, to the cutting lines. All right. Now I can start to add these trim pieces. I'm going to do the front first. Now these sideboards will go on and they hide these slots where the roof ribs come, come over and also add more strength um, to the roof support. And the final pieces to add are these thin, thin roof trim pieces that go up at the very top like that. All right, we ready for the moment of truth? Let's see if it fits. <laughs> yep, I love it when a plan comes together. Now the, the big thunder cabs at the parks don't have any glass in the windows, uh, but I'm going to use a little bit of artistic license and I'm going to cut some, some clear acrylic and uh, add, some, add some windows just to the front up here of the, of the cab. And we'll do that right now. There we go. Just like that. Now I'll use a couple of dabs of uh, Eileen's Tacky Glue to hold this in place. And for my project, I have, I went ahead and I cut another interior wall on the laser. This is out of some 20 thou thick uh, laser board and I've painted it to match the interior. And this will slide in right over that glazing as a window casement and you won't see the edges. And that is how that looks once the glue is dried. All right, well, one of the last pieces of the puzzle is the roof. And I cut a roof from some more 20 thou um, laser board. And I was trying to bend it a little bit, give it a little bit of a bend to it. It's scribed on the underside with some like four inch wide boards. So it's a nice little interior detail. And the, uh, the holes for the whistle are already pre-drilled. Before I glue this to the roof, I want to sand these edges just a little bit to make it match the arc of the roof line here. So I'll get my sanding block, very fine uh, 300 uh, grit sandpaper in here and very gently, very carefully sand that edge down. When you're trying to glue something in a bow shape or follow a curve like this, if you try to do it all at once, um, you're kind of asking for trouble. So I'm going to put glue about a little over halfway across here. And then I'm going to clamp the roof on just one side. And I'll let that glue set up 
and dry almost completely before I go in and do the other side. Okay, now I can um, carefully add some glue to the other side using a small brush and glue this side in place. You can see what the interior of the cab is looking like. Well, I do believe this little cab is now structurally complete and I can start adding some details. And the first thing I want to add are the the name plates. Now I'm not going to call it UB Bold or You Are Daring. <laughs> this is going to be the Frank Thomas, named after the Disney animator. First I want to cut it down to size. What I'll do is spray the back of this with some Super 77 adhesive and then I will uh, laminate it onto this piece of Bristol board. Trying not to get that sticky sticky glue all over my hands. Use my brayer. Get the air out of there. You can see I've given myself a choice of two different color schemes. Uh, the ones at oops, excuse me, the ones at Disneyland are this. Uh, the nameplates are this lighter, kind of mint green color. But eh, once again, I think I'm going to use some artistic license. I'm going to use the darker green, so I have more of a contrast. Okay, not too bad. Now I'll find a close color of the dark green and I'll go around and paint the edges here so they don't show up white. Painting the edges of something like this, you always want to work from the back and kind of use the edge of the brush. Just a little bit of paint on it. Just a very small amount of paint on the brush too is all you need. You see I'm using the edge of this, uh, what is this, double zero sable brush. On Big Thunder, these, these nameplates are right up below the window, like that. But I think I want to center mine, once again, artistic license. And center mine in that uh, tongue and groove paneling. Another final detail is this little ring. It's kind of a bracket for the whistle. I painted a, a grimy black. It's one of the laser cut pieces. And I'll just glue that in place right over that hole. I'm using the lid of a pencil to make sure those holes line up. I'm going to clean off that extra glue with a little bit of water. While I'm waiting for the glue to dry completely on that, I'm going to drill some holes for the grab irons, and I just removed the ones from the Bachman cab. I'm going to be recycling those just like I am this whistle, which came from another Bachman cab, which I had. I'm going to use a number 76 bit and drill a couple of little holes. Tiny little holes about a scale two feet apart. And finally, we can seat this whistle into the hole. There we go. Need to drill just one more hole. I'm going to use a uh, 61 size bit. And put a hole right here below the roof line for the bell cable. All right. For the bell cable, the bell cord, I'll be using some 
elastic thread. Very handy stuff if you can get your hands on it. I'll show you all a little trick to threading this. First make sure you get a nice clean end. Then put some uh, cyanoacrylate on the end. Do that real quick. Harden the end there. Makes it a lot easier to thread it through little holes like this. There we go. Now I'm going to cut this much longer than I need it. And set that aside for a minute. For an engineer, I have this little Woodland Scenics fellow. And what attracted me to him was he had his arm outstretched like this, and he was originally holding a, a pry bar. But I cut that away and then drilled his hand out all the way through so that he can actually be standing here in the cab holding on to the whistle cable. Um, I'm using a piece of card here to simulate the thickness of the floor. Let's Thread that through, and then see if I can glue this in place. Glue his hand on there with a little bit of CA. And I think it's time to install our new cab. And I'm just going to tack it in place in the four corners with a little bit of CA. I'm just going to put a little dab, tiny little drop on each corner. And I'm going to put a couple on this fellow's feet. Now I'm going to take this elastic thread, stretch it out a little bit, put it on the other side of this bell handle. Now to model the number plate, I'm using the stock Bachman number plate, which you can see is blank because this was an undecorated model. But I'm going to use this number seven, which comes from a set of uh, Grantline uh, building numbers. And I painted it brass. And we're going to cement it in place right on that number plate. Straight if we can. Lucky number seven. This bell cord's a little too pristine and white, so I'm going to stain it with some watercolors. And once I get this stained after this dries, I'll use some diluted white glue to add a, big, a bit of a sag to this rope. I want to improve the look of this plastic cast-in coal load back here. So I'm going to dilute some glue, some white glue. This is Eileen's. And uh, I'm going to brush it on the top. And then I'm going to sprinkle on, this is real coal uh, that I got up in uh, Chama, New Mexico. Found a lump of coal alongside the tracks and I broke it up with a hammer into scale sized pieces. And I will sprinkle that on top of this glue. Alright, let that dry and see, see how we look. Shovel leaning up on the side here. There we go, perfect. Just like that. Just got a couple of small spots on the cab I want to touch up. I just sprayed some of the, the color that I used into this little cup here. Use that quickly before it dries. Okay. With this brush, 
then I can do the final weathering on this. Now this is the late 19th century and uh, the Thunder Mesa Mining Company prides itself on keeping its locomotives clean and well maintained. That said, there's still going to be a little bit of road grime here and there on these engines. Uh, particularly on the roof here, you're going to have soot from the uh, coal smoke. And I'm just using my colored chalks to brush that on there. The other thing you're going to have a lot of is uh, alkali stains oops, from the whistle, water stains. So we'll take some white. that. Now I just want to generally dirty the roof up a little bit. Blend these colors together. Another place you're going to have water stains is dripping down around where the where the tank is filled. And then I want to brush on just a little bit more road grime down here along the bottom of the cab. Okay, now I'll go clean the wheels and the contacts, and I think we're ready to take old number seven for a spin. Thanks for coming along with me for this Thunder Mesa locomotive story. I had a lot of fun with this project, and I hope you enjoyed the ride. I'll see you next time, amigos. Adios for now. <laughs>